is looking for a people. We want the glory of God. Let the glory of God show up. If the glory of God is not within you, it's not going to show, just show up just to show up. The glory of God has got to be here. We've got to minister to the Lord. When he tells you at 3 o'clock in the morning, get you up and just says, dance with me, romance me, love me. This is what I want. We can't say, but I've got to be, I've got to be in intercession right now. When my dad was dying of cancer and I was tired and I went to my friend in Orlando, I said, I'm so angry with the enemy. I said, he's not going to take my dad out. I said, I'm going to go on a 40-day water fast tomorrow. I said, not happening. My dad's not going. I no sooner got that out of my mouth and Sister Gwen Shaw, I was under her. She, said, she called me. She said, don't even think about that water fast. I'm like, but I know how to do a water fast. She goes, no, God, you are not doing a water fast. Because the Lord knew I was weak and I was exhausted. When you're exhausted, unless the Lord tells you to fast, you need to be eating a lot of protein. You should be eating a lot of protein right now the next couple of days if you really are ready to contain the glory of God. We've got to be physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. We've got to be ready. I talk to Linda a lot of times in the morning, and she convicts me, not totally where I'm doing it yet, but she's like in the gym, and she's working out. Because God's not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. God's not going to take your body and make it prepared. If the glory of God really comes on us to the degree that he wants to, and we're not physically fit and spiritually prepared and emotionally and mentally, it's going to consume us. It's going to be too much when the kabod of his glory really comes on us. When the kabod of who he is really comes on us. Lisa, I want you to come up here. So when, when, the, when Prophet Kelby was talking about Isaiah 6, I said to him earlier, I said, it's interesting because I said, I heard the Lord two days ago to say, I, he kept saying Isaiah 6, Isaiah 6. I said, well, maybe this is for a different time. And then when he talked about it today, I said, well, I can maybe prepare for this some, some other time. But Isaiah 6 says that I saw the Lord and he was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple how much of his train is in your temple is there a train at all in your temple is there just a little, a little clip but no train just like you prepare for your husband just like you prepare for your wife preparing for that one day in a holy matrimony he is daily preparing himself for you he is our bridegroom are you preparing yourself for him are you spending time cultivating that relationship does your worship go up to him as a sweet sweet savior or have you been watching pornography and watching horror movies and and listening to filth and hearing gossip about your pastor or People in the conference that you might not totally understand their vibe or whatever, so you have something to say. Oh, but I, I'm going to just praise you now. And God says, you know, your perfume stinks. Is your train on? Is your train on? Are you prepared? Years ago when we had a church, I had my mom and dad on staff. And my mom actually said being old school and used to all-night prayer meetings, she said, I'm used to a lot more prayer meetings than what we have, that what you have in your church. And I said, well, Benny's gone all the time, and the chapel's closed. I said, it's ridiculous. I said, maybe we can unlock the chapel, which we did. We did a one-week prayer meeting, and then one week went into two. And then I said, well, maybe we can do it a third week. We had a sovereign move of God. By the time we were six months into a sovereign move of a prayer meeting, at quarter to six in the morning, all of a sudden, just like you boil a kettle, the liquid fire of God poured from the top of my head all the way through my being, and it became a hard shell. And as that happened, my spirit man started leaving my body. I thought it was the rapture. Are we really ready for the rapture? We're talking about giving me the glory, but some of you, if the rapture were to happen in five minutes, would you be at the altar or what would you be doing? And as this happened, and the liquid fire literally went into my whole being, 
And I started going up, and I did. I said, oh my God, this is a rapture. This will make you laugh. But I jumped up and I ran in the bathroom and I started brushing my hair. Oh my God, my hair's a mess. My hair's a mess. And then I started laughing because the Lord showed me, yep, that would be about all you would be thinking about and worried about is my hair needs to be just perfect for you, Lord. But I didn't have to say, but I wasn't in the word today. I didn't spend time with you. I wasn't obedient when you told me no. I did it anywhere. I went into that place I shouldn't have gone. I hung around those people where there was compromise in their life. Is your train on? Is your train on? Are you ready? Are you really the bride of Christ? Are you really the bride of Christ? Derek Prince says with deliverance, he said, if you need deliverance and you can't get anywhere, it's one of five things. Number one, unforgiveness. We can't afford to hold grudges. We can't afford to be bitter or to hold offenses. We've got to walk in forgiveness because it will stop you from your deliverance, but it will stop you from being able to contain the kabod, and you will not be able to blow and go into those winds that this prophet is talking about. You will not be able to carry the glory of God. Secondly, abortion has got to be confessed as murder. Abortion is murder. And if you've had an abortion and you're wondering why you're not feeling the presence of God and you're wondering why you're under attack and why you can't get deliverance and you keep going for impartations and nothing happened, you've got to confess that abortion as a murder. That's a stronghold. We are cutting off branches and we're not dealing with strongholds. Third, homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism, that is an abomination to the Lord and it is wrong. It's not preached behind the pulpits anymore. And it is wrong and it is a sin and it's a stronghold. Thirdly, witchcraft. Either being controlled by people or you controlling people. When you want to say yes, or when you want to say no, but you find yourself saying yes, you're being controlled. It's called witchcraft. The last one is involvement in the occult. Even reading horoscopes is a stronghold because God says no to horoscopes. Don't follow your, your, your sign and your stars and your month and all this stuff. It's an abomination to the Lord. And it will keep you from being able to go into those winds. And it will keep you from the glory of God. We have got to, again, clean ourselves up. We've got to be obedient. God is raising up, like Reese House, a Nazarite generation. He's ra raising up a bunch of Nazarites. Decades ago, the Lord says, I am, I am putting a Nazarite vow on you. I will not allow any wine to touch your lips. I'm calling you to be a Nazarite. And I said, yes, Lord. Then several years later, we got invited to this well-known preacher's house who was on TV. And he was some obviously big shot. My husband and I went and Pastor Ralph and Eileen Wilkerson and boy, his, his library was very impressive. And we were having a great time until it was dinner time. And he pulled out the most expensive bottle of wine and started pouring it. When he handed it to me, I said, no, thank you. I'm a Nazarite. I will not compromise for you, for anybody. God said, no wine is to touch my lips. I am set apart. I am consecrated. No, I will not take it. He's like, nobody tells me no. I said, well, there's a first time for everything. No. I will not touch your wine. My husband pulled me to the side and he said, you're embarrassing me. I said, well, I'm sorry. He said, there's a verse in the Bible that says, if you make a bow... The husband has the right to break the vow. I said, I understand that verse. If I make a vow that I make, you as my husband, yeah, you have the right to appoint, to have me break it.
But when God tells me to take a vow, his no overrides your yes. His no overrides your yes. And there's times that you have to say no. Because if God tells you no, and you have the convictions from the Lord not to do something, or God's called you to be a Nazarite and to walk like a Reese Howe as a Nazarite and change history and change the nation and to prepare for the coming of the Lord. Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy. I would encourage you, buy this prophet, buy her. Shaw. You can even put him on as, as tonight, you can put him on as your wedding bridal thing over your head. Because you say, well, we're here today, but what do I do on Monday and Tuesday when I'm not around the man and woman of God? You're taking their, that impartation into your house. Be careful what impartations you take. Somebody years ago gave me a book. I said, get it out of my house. It was a, a Christian book. I said, it's dangerous, get it out of my house. Oh, you're so sheltered, it'll open you up, whatever. Yeah, it opened me up to a demonic attack where the third night of reading it, I had hands as well as my hands around my throat and I almost died that night. And because nobody, including my husband, understood I was under attack because of a book, the wrong book that came into my house, I was forced against my will and put on prescription drugs. If you handed me a cigarette, I wouldn't even know how to hold it, okay? I am not a drug addict, whatever. But because of the wrong impartation. Thank the Lord that this man and woman of God have written books. And there's books inside of you, Linda, that, this, that the body of Christ in this world needs, sweetie. There are so many books inside of you. Those are the kind of books you want. These are the kind of books that I take into my house. People that I know, that yes, they had an encounter with God. They have spiritual gifts. But there was no compromise in their life. They lived a life of holiness. They lived a life of no compromise. They said, I will be obedient unto death. If I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. Lord, if I perish, I perish. When the Lord said, I will shake everything that can be shaken. And only those with their feet on the ground, their eyes on me. People of character and integrity and pure motives will stand through this. He gave that to me in 1992. And he said, it's going to happen in the fall of the year, and something's going to happen around Thanksgiving time. Well, every year I've thought, this is the year. I'm convinced that this is the year. Are your eyes on the Lord? Are your feet firmly on the ground? Because I tell you, the audible voice and his anger that came upon me at the age of 33 that night. I, and he said, you're the key in this, and this is your assignment. And I said, Lord, as long as I hear your voice, and I said that prophet, as long as I know you're telling me to do it and you're telling me to say it, I said, if I perish, I perish. But you know what? All that matters to me is one day I will look him face to face. And as long as he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I knew I could trust you with that assignment. I knew you wouldn't take that alcohol. I knew even though that he went on TV and he blasted you in front of the whole world and then Brother Wilkerson and Benny were like, well, we need to go on TV to say we're sorry. And I just stood right in front of the camera. I said, we're not sorry. We're not going on this is your day because this is not his day. And it's not going to be your day either because I'm not moving. I will not, I will not mince my words. And I will not be somebody. What you see behind the pulpit is who I am. What you see on the front row is who they are. Now, if you are ready for God to absolutely take every part of the world out of you and shake you upside down as the worshipers come, and you really are ready for an impartation, but you don't want an impartation from Dr. Linda and myself and this group. You don't want an impartation if there's going to be compromise in your life. You don't want an impartation if you're not ready at 3 o'clock in the morning when God says, I need intercession. I need an intercessor. Because people are like, oh, my goodness, were you up at 3 o'clock in the morning? I'm like, yes, and you were too because you're my daughter. And I'm like, wakey, wakey, get up. Mama's up. Up, 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 up. God is looking for people that he can drop what he needs to birth on the earth. We are in end times. We are so close to the coming of the Lord. Are you ready for his coming? Are you his bride? Is your train on? 
Is your train on? Or are you going to have to go in your attic and, and look for it? But it's filthy and it's dirty because of all the compromise. God says, I've set you apart for those four winds. The Dr. Miles Prophet is going to be talking about that. You'll be more ready to blow, to blow those winds where the enemy's like, whew, it was strong last night, but now, whew.